And first here at noon, breaking news involving the high school sports season. Just moments ago, the CIAC announced it will delay the first date for all fall sports. So Saturday, August 29th, Channel 3 Avenue News reporter Sharon Johnson is live at the CIAC headquarters in Cheshire with more on what we're learning about this. Good afternoon, Sharon. Good afternoon. Yeah, we're following those details about fall sports, specifically what's going to be happening with football and volleyball. But joining me now to explain a little bit more about that is CIAC Executive Director Glenn Lungarini. Glenn, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My and pleasure. So, Glenn, I guess the first question would be, what is the latest update from the CIAC regarding fall sports and when the sports is go when sports is going to start this season? Last evening, we had a wonderful discussion with DPH, their medical experts, and our medical experts had an opportunity uh, to get together to learn uh, what has changed or what's new since uh, July to where we are now. Uh, and, and was, again, just a, another in the series of great co uh, communications collaboration uh, amongst the departments. Uh, for us right now, uh, we have the recommendations that uh, volleyball and football uh, should be postponed at this time. So. Uh, we are continuing to talk about that. We are also talking about the potential to uh, return to our non-contact conditioning that we've been doing uh, since July 6th as soon as possible. So talk to me a little bit about the conversation that you had with DPH uh, um, last night about sports. What did that conversation look like? Well, again, it's trying to understand uh, where positions have, have changed and see uh, you know, what new information has become available. Uh, one of the pieces that DPH shared with us is uh, you know, really the demographic of people that um, are, are becoming infected or testing positive has sort of shifted downward where it's a younger demographic uh, right now than maybe in, uh, you know, May, June uh, was testing positive. So just being able to, to hear and, and understand those point of views. And then from our medical experts, you know, still trying to understand clarification of uh, whether or not, you know, t today is uh, the positivity rates are still good, hospitalizations are still low, deaths are still low, and what the true risk of playing in sport uh, actually is at this point. Why is the DPH considering gu guiding you guys on waiting for volleyball and football to be played in the spring, pushing that back until the spring? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, football is the only high-risk sport that we have in the fall. Uh, that has been ongoing discussions between uh, CIAC and, D and DPH as we go along. Um, you know, we have to ensure that when we play that sport, not only uh, does it meet the standards that we set forth, but it also aligns with the governor's reopening plans of when competition for high risk sports can play. With volleyball, it is a moderate risk sport be be because it's indoors. Uh, it raises some additional concern from DPH's point of view. Uh, so we will be continuing to work with them to see if there's ways uh, we can maybe modify uh, the, the sport to uh, to be able to uh, address those factors and maybe continue. Well, Mr. Longarini, thank you so much for your time today. And the CT reopening committee will be also having a meeting today discussing some of these details. So we're also going to be listening out for that. And we'll have those details tonight. For now, live in Treasure, Sharon Johnson, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.